Howdy folks, today we're going to be uh, taking one of these Lutron uh, dimmers apart, these Decora di dimmers. These are neat uh, little switches. They have a fade in and a fade out. You can program them so they'll fade, they'll turn off as a nice fade out, you know, a minute later after you hit the button, giving you time to leave the room or whatever. Pretty common dimmer switch these days. They don't need a neutral. They, they're in series of the circuit. So you've got, you know, a hot feeding, either this or the lamp, and they're just insert in the series circuit of the lamp. So they don't need their own dedicated neutral. But they do have one big issue, and I've fried a few of these over the years. When changing bulbs, I've forgotten to turn them off. And if you're changing a bulb and something in the bulb um, housing shorts, uh, it'll blow them up internally. And I just want to show you how these open up and maybe we can even fix it. The first thing you got to do is just uh, cut the little side sticker on it and just get a small screwdriver to pop the cover off. It should just pop out. Okay. So there's just two little Phillips screws that hold this uh, front aluminum uh, top housing onto the back housing. Uh, there's also a rivet here that's uh, on the um, transistor. Uh, so you, you have to drill it out. They've heat sunk the transistor right to the metal uh, face of it just to dissipate the heat. So you just have to drill out this rivet. Like so. And our Phillips screwdriver. We'll take these Phillips screws out. And then this rascal should just pop off. Oh, there's a little uh, plastic tab here too. This usually breaks off when you try to open it. There we go. Uh, it should pop off. Oh, I know. That, uh, I call it a transistor, it's actually a triac. So I gotta get, just pop that off of the rivet there. So there we go. Now, mo the ones I've had fail before on me, it's the triac that's gone. Triac is a, uh, it's a neat little device, semiconductor. It, uh, it's good at controlling AC, um, current so um, you can look it up online but there's there's essentially it'll it'll flow it'll flow current in both directions for AC and it's controlled through the gate just think of it as a as a switch essentially um, anyway so and there's a middle half here as well now these boards are held in with soldering so I'm gonna have to get my soldering uh, iron out and I'm going to get some solder wick and I'm going to solder these two pins that are holding the board in. I'm just going to pause it while I do that. There are these two uh, soldered pins. Well, I've, I've just put the solder wick on them, got most of it off. It's still stuck in there though. And they're, these pins are just going to your two hot leads. Well, one's hot, one's output, or the dimmer one. Um, and uh, yeah, anyways, there's a little notch in here. You can get a flat bladed screwdriver in. You know, have some safety glasses on or something because when you're doing this, sometimes the solder can pop up. This one seems to be the one that's stuck. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Another one stuck to you. A little bit. Okay, so that's all there is to these, well, quite a bit. There's a lot crammed on these little boards. Uh, the microcontrollers on the back half of it. Um, little mauve in there. But, uh, like I said, this is the usual culprit. It's a triac. And the number on here is, these were my glasses. Um, 130-082 it looks like. Um, anyways, to test these, 
I, triacs usually fail closed and that's what happened when I changed the light um, it, something in the it was a pot light and the wire in it must have got pinched when I was putting the pot when I was putting the light assembly back in the pot and I heard it spark uh, it didn't blow it didn't break the breaker uh, and then it just went to full brightness and I couldn't shut it off with the switch um, there's no way to turn it off and uh, chances are this is the culprit so we'll just there's one way to check it uh, when you look at these triacs um, this is the gate lead on this side so when you're looking at it face on with the heat sink on the back uh, writing on the front uh, this is your gate lead uh, and if you w follow the trace looks like it's going through a little zener diode and then probably down to the microcontroller maybe through another um, switching transistor probably through a switching transistor but anyways these are your two switched leads Just to check this get your multimeter on the ohm scale uh, actually we're, we're going to go into uh, do the continuity thing and if these if this is shot this will show continuity which it is so it shouldn't be doing that a good triac uh, your two switch leads will be open when it's not being triggered by the gate to show this a bit better I just uh, I unsoldered the uh, the triac out of here uh, like I said this was a 130-082 I looked that up online. Can't really. There's a few of them. Looks like they're direct from China. Um, can't really find specs on it. Uh, the closest I can determine, it's it's pretty much the equivalent of a BTA uh, 08, um, probably a 400 volt rated triac. Like I said, you know these fail when the A1 and the A2, the switch terminals, are shorted to each other, which they are. A good triac, that won't be the case. Okay, only when they get the signal from the gate will they close that, close those two. Um, and that's essentially what's happening in a triac is that gate is being pulsed on and off um, to cut the the waveform. That's what makes the triac neat is it, it doesn't just do one half of the waveform, it does both halves. So uh, I'll try to draw a sine wave here. So if that's our sine, if that's our AC sine wave, what the triac will do is the more you dim it, it'll start chopping off part of the uh, of the sine wave current. And the more you dim it, the more it will chop off equally on both sides. At least I think that's how they work. I'm sure someone cor will correct me if I'm wrong. So like I said, uh, I've got, I found a couple of used ones I had in the old junk bin. I think this one came out of a fan control. This is a uh, BTA-12. Um, like I said, you'd probably be okay with a BTA-08 or even an 06. I think that's what the 130-082 is roughly. Um, then I've also got, this is a common one, a BT-137, although you can't use, the other thing to be mindful of is you have to get a uh, replacement triac that is insulated, meaning that the heat sink back is not conductive with one of the switched pins. Uh, a non-insulated triac, that center A2 pin, will be conductive with the, uh, with the heat sink. And if you recall, that heat sink is riveted to the front uh, aluminum plate, which is acting as a heat sink for that triac. And this plate is grounded in the, uh, in the electrical box, both by a ground wire and also when you screw it in. So you, you have to make sure the triac that you get is an insulated one. So any of the BTA series triacs will work. Uh, I might link to uh, a couple down in the description here. And I'm just going to solder that in real quick and we'll test it to see if it works. We're back all hooked up. 
show you real quick how we've done this. This coiled wire is coming from a power bar feeding the switch, so it's getting 120 volts AC. So we've got the in coming into the switch, and then the dimmed out, power out going to our load. This would be your two, same thing as your two, uh, the two screws on the switch box. Um, and the load in this case is just a 50 watt uh, standard GU10 halogen bulb. So our dim load is feeding uh, the one pin on the bulb and then the other side of the bulb is going out to the uh, back to the wall outlet. So as I mentioned, these Maestro dimmer switches, they don't need to have a dedicated neutral. Uh, they're in a series loop circuit um, with your load, which most dimmers are. Um, so we'll just turn on the power bar. See if there's any big pops or smoke. So far so good. And just to show you here these little tactile switches, these two outboard ones, the little white ones, they're, that's what these little rockers on the switch control. Up and down, that's what controls your di uh, brightness level of your dimmer and sets it. And then the center, uh, center switch is the little, L, uh, little yellow, yellow uh, button here. So we'll just dial up, so you'll see the little green LED light. So that never happened before when this failed, went to full brightness and none of these LEDs would work. The switch was completely dead. And there's our light coming on. Awesome. Right up to full brightness. And then you can just set whatever level you want when you hit the on and off switch. Gives it a nice slow dim down and it has stored that same uh, preset uh, brightness level so when you turn the light back on slowly dims up to that preset brightness level and if you wanted to program a longer off time you hold the power button or sorry uh, the on and off button so the center pad on the uh, switch plate and you'll see the LEDs they'll flash in sequence and they'll count up and each time they count up another LED, it adds 10 seconds to the off time. So let's do a 20 second off time here. So I'll hold the uh, on off and you'll see the bottom LED flashing and then the second one. There we go. Oops, we went to three accidentally. So now we've got a 30 second off time. So it'll take 30 seconds for this to uh, turn off, giving you time to leave the room or whatever. There it's down to the second LED and it will go down to the first one and turn off slowly dimming down the whole time. So a nice effect. So if you've got one of these Maestro uh, dimmer switches and it's not working, uh, you can try replacing the Triac. It's pretty pretty easy to get to, pretty easy to replace. Um, and if you can't find the same number, the 130082, as I said, a, um, a BTA uh, 08 or 06 probably do you. That 08 or 06 number just represents the current handling ability and uh, just make sure it is uh, insulated triac that you don't want that uh, the heat sink back of it um, power uh, conductive with either the, the power leads that a2 power lead and all the bta series triacs are insulated i think it's what is it the bt is it the BTBs that are not insulated? So make sure it's a BTA. This is a BTA 12. Uh, overkill for the switch. I'll link to a couple down at the bottom here probably. If you've got one of these and you want to try replacing that Triac if it's dead, a couple of bucks over spending 40, 50 bucks on a new uh, Maestro dimmer. Cheers folks.